You want a heat pump that doesn't break the bank, but you are not convinced a cheaper model will actually hold up. Grant's new R290 unit promises high efficiency, low noise, full up control from your phone, all at the lower price point. If you get this wrong, you still spend thousands and could be stuck with the system that under delivers. In this video, we are putting this unit to the test to see how it stacks up against more premium brands that we usually fit. And if you're expecting a smooth, no disruption install, well, this one's about to prove you very, very wrong. Property was originally built in 1915 and it's a period property, fully detached, three bedrooms, floor area is 134 square meters and we calculated heat loss at 6.6 .6 kilowatts. And this is the unit that we may be installing here, a 9 kilowatt Grand R290 uh, heat pump. Why did I say we might be installing it here? It will depend on what we find in those walls. If the walls are uninsulated or the insulation quality is poor, we may have to reconsider it. Sixty-five mil cavity. Overall thickness of the wall, two hundred ninety. It's a very decent, very well insulated cavity. Okay, this is a uh, blown fiber, obviously, in the wall, so the whole building probably is original, and at the later stage they've uh, installed this kind of insulation. And that's the airing cover. So the boiler is on the other side of this room, one floor below. So obviously the system is vented, vented heating vented hot water, we're gonna be sealing the heating, sealing uh, hot water going for unvented sealing there. This pipe work is so dirty, we are gonna have some fun trying to flush this all through. <laughs> and we've got a bit of an impossible task because the diameter of this cylinder is 540 millimeters and the cupboard we are putting it in is 540 exactly as well. I'm not even sure if it will fit now. Now I wish I have a ply line the wall. Okay. Well, height wise, just about. Uh, does the door close? No. No, because this touches the immersion. So I, if I pull it forward a little bit, so we just about managed to get the cylinder in, but we had to remove a T. Normally I would put my supply from the top, cold water supply to the cylinder, drain cock on the bottom, and one inch connection to the cylinder. Instead, we've used one inch uh, male iron to elbow, and look how much space you can save on that. It's about maybe 50 mil saved, and that allows us to put the cylinder in and have Two, three mil to spare. Poor Peter has a heavy side, doesn't even realize. Okay, and let's position the feet over. Yeah, that's about right, isn't it? More or less, more yeah. or less. We started doing uh, external pipe work, so that's in the trunking, going inside, slightly above the old flue hole. That was too low for us. And I'm doing temperature pressure relief from the unvented cylinder. That will go here, but we have to go over this waste pipe. So I'm not marking those ones because I just go as close to the bend as possible on both ends. And as you can see, this bender over bends both of those bends by a little bit. I think it allows for springing back of the pipe, which doesn't seem to be happening. We've done our uh, D2 pipe work with a beautiful offset, and now it's time to connect primary pipe work to the unit. And I'm using those really interesting Inta valves, you see, with the uh, extended handle, so we can insulate them nicely. And they actually don't have handles. You need a key to operate them. Thank you, James Lowe, for sending those. Uh, James is desperately trying to bribe me, so, so I review his book, Heat Pumps Unlocked. And we are not putting antifreeze valves on this unit, and we're not using glycol. You're not supposed to be using glycol with 
propane unit with R290 units. Reason being, you want the propane to vent to the outside if there is a leak through the auto air vent in the unit and glycol keeps propane in the suspension of, of water and glycol and can transfer it into the property. We don't want that, so we're not expected or supposed to use glycol on R290 units. And Grant, similar to Nibi and Wiesmann, allows us not to use antifreeze valves either, especially if you are uh, in a place that doesn't get many power cuts and also doesn't get prolonged periods of below zero uh, temperatures. So we've taken the uh, vented cylinder out. We also removed cold water storage system in the loft. We had to cut it into smaller pieces to even to be able to get it out. So it's next to impossible to put it back in now. And we We've got a major issue because whoever did the survey cocked up a bit. Let me show you. A little bit of water coming out. However, later on it dies to something that is two liters per minute. Maybe even a liter per minute. It literally, there is no dynamic pressure here. There's, there's no flow. There is some serious restriction on the supply to the house. Yeah, nothing happens on the hot. Open cold. This completely dies. We've got bonding to the cold water going to the external tap. The reason is there's no visible stopcock, no visible mains pipe work going to the house anywhere on the ground floor. And having three, four liters a minute flow, there was no other choice than put a cold water storage system back in the loft and go back to a vented system. Because we have no flow, no pressure in this system, we won't be able to thorough flush it, power flush it either, because look, we're getting two, three liters a minute. We can't even uh, mains flush the radiators in the garden. So I'll probably have to take a pump and we're gonna pump that water through the radiators because this is hopeless. But this amount of stuff coming from it, it's disgusting. We're getting close to finishing this job. What's left is just demineralizing the system, insulating the pipework and unit is now running. It's done the hot water cycle and it's running heating on a test mode and happy to report we are getting 27 liters a minute on this system at 1600 liters per hour. So we've got enough flow on the system. That's great. You can hear the fan. It's not the quietest unit, it's not super loud, it's rated at 54 decibels, nominal, it's not maximum loudness, they all, pretty much all modern units are rated at 54, but other 54 decibel units are, the perception of loudness like Valence feels quieter. It's a nice looking unit, uh, the casing though, the build quality, ac accuracy of, of the build, leaves a little bit to be desired. Let's talk about the controls, because honestly they are more important than the external unit outside. How are new R290 controls? In short, they are a massive upgrade over previous grant controls. The interface is way better, there's more option, and actually they feel usable. I put them ahead of likes of uh, Mitsubishi's, Samsung's, and older Daikin's. Personally, I still prefer Valent, but I do know those controls inside out, so it's not a fair fight. That said, they are not top of the class yet. If you are used to Wiesmann or Nibi, you'll know what I mean. Those are still the gold standard. Let's talk what's missing in those controls. As for today, there is no eco mode for hot water, which means the unit will go flat out when doing hot water. Great for fast recovery, not so great for efficiency. The weather compensation setup on this controller is simply brilliant. You get a visual of the heat curve with adjustable slope and parallel shift. It's clear, easy to tweak and honestly it's on par with Wiesmann and Nibi and actually a better implementation of the heat curve to Valent Aerotherm. Also, while I was working on this video, I got an update from Grant for the controls firmware. Being able to just take a micro SD card and upload new firmware to the controller is great as it means that with time this heat pump will only get better. I haven't had nearly enough time to fully explore the controls and the real test will be this coming winter. The system is hooked up to the open energy monitor, so if you want to see how it performs in the real world, I'll leave a link to the monitoring in the description 
of this video below. I would argue that if you're looking for a budget option, Grand is the best choice on the market right now. It's priced at Daikin or Samsung level, but offers better controls, which should lead to better performance and also much better company backup compared to most budget brands. So, should you go for the Grand R290 heat pump, or maybe you should spend a little bit more and go for a more premium brand? To help you understand what an upmarket option actually looks like, I've prepared this video for you to watch next.